Welcome back, guys. Holy moly, it is time for a 6.5 Grindle video. I didn't realize just how long it had been. I knew it had been a long time since we had done some 6.5 Grindle loading, but I looked, it was eight months ago was the last time I posted a 6.5 Grendel video. That is just ridiculous. Spend all that money building a gun and then just completely neglect it. That's about to change and it's gonna change uh, a lot around here. We are gonna be having uh, regular 6.5 Grendel videos from here on out. So, yeah. Actually, this, this video is brought to you by a commenter on my, uh, one of my previous videos, yeah, I don't know. But he asked when I was going to do it, and I said, by God, I'm going to do it tomorrow. So that is what this video is. I let him pick the bullet, and he chose the 123 grain Sierra Match King. I love Sierra Match Kings. I've shot some of my very best groups in you know in other calibers with match kings but i haven't tried them in my 6.5 grendel yet so i am stoked to try these guys out these have been uh sitting here in my bullet pile for a freaking year just waiting on me to get off my lazy butt so super stoked to try these out we are going to shoot hodgton benchmark and ramshot tack just a quick and dirty uh you know we'll do 25 rounds of each powder just go out and see how they shoot just kind of a first step just a first little exploration with this bullet that we haven't shot yet so that should be fun i also have a bunch of factory ammo left over from when i first bought the gun i bought some factory ammo to test with and like I've got boxes of this crap. I think I bought it for the brass. Like, you know, it wasn't that much more expensive to just go ahead and buy ammo instead of uh, instead of empty brass. So I just bought the freaking ammo. I'm gonna shoot all of this. I pr probably have you know 50 or 60 rounds left in here. So I'm gonna shoot up all of this stuff. And I've got a box of. 123 grain uh, Amaxes from some previous loadings. I'm going to shoot these guys as well. So no excuses on I haven't shot the gun in a long time or whatever. That's what I'm going to do. Get to the range, shoot through all of this ammo, get re-familiarized with the gun, make sure everything's working well, and then we'll get into... Uh, to test on our loads. So I am hoping to shoot some really good groups. I've got, yeah, I just, I had, I had this brass already cleaned up and ready to rock. It hasn't been resized or anything. It's just been decapped and then, uh, and then tumbled. So this stuff is ready for resizing. Trimming if necessary, we'll see. It's been so long, I don't even remember how many times these were fired. Man, it's kind of sad. So that'll be step one, is getting these guys resized, and then we'll just see where we're at from that point. So I'm going to use uh, Redding Imperial Sizing Dye Wax. That's my favorite lube. So I've got, it's been so long, maybe I should uh, go back over some of this. I am using Forster Dyes. Uh, you know, Forster full-length seating die over here somewhere. There it is. Yep, Forster full-length uh, sizing die. I said seating die, didn't I? Sizing die. And I'm using a uh, Forster ultra micrometer seating die. So with the resizing die, I remember from... I should probably go back and watch my own videos. That would be the, uh, the smart thing to do. But... Eh, what, what fun is that? I seem to remember, I've got this guy set to where it's just lightly touching the shell holder. And I remember that I didn't really need to resize these guys a bunch. And I've got a case comparator here. 
And I was looking at a couple of these earlier. I seem to recall I was bumping the shoulder back about five thousandths or something like that, and it was working fine. So I'm going to try resizing one here with the setting I've got where it's just lightly touching the shell holder, and we'll see how much it bumps the shoulder. Yeah, pretty nice little, uh, little gap between my shell holder and sizing die, but that is okay. See if it moved the shoulder at all. It did not. So I'm going to move this down just a little bit more. Still isn't really moving. Keep going here. That might have been too much. Back that up just a touch. I think we're starting to move the shoulder. That seems to have, have to be about a thousandth of an inch shorter than it was. So I'm going to go just a smidgen more. We'll see where that gets us. There we go. So that uh, about four thousandths. All right, let me. Resize another one and we'll see how much it moves. Yeah, right now it's at about 25. And now it's at about 21. So that's about uh, 4,000. That's uh, pretty much what I saw in the other. And, you know, for those of you maybe, uh, crap, the last time I made a 6.5 Grendel video or went through any of this, I probably had like 2,000 subscribers. So, might be a lot of uh, people who don't know what the hell I'm doing here. But this is kind of somewhere between a normal full length resizing, where a lot of times I'll talk about, you know, making sure that you get really good intimate contact between the shell holder and your sizing die, well that, that ensures that you push the shoulder back the maximum amount, you know, which uh, a lot of times is good for, make sure you don't have cycling issues or chambering issues. So that's kind of the, the normal full length sizing process. And then, you know, a lot of times with bolt guns, you use neck sizing where you don't even move the shoulder of the case. You don't resize the body of the case at all. You're only just resizing the neck. This is somewhere in between. We're full length sizing, but we're just, we're controlling how much we're pushing that shoulder back just so that, uh, you know, should extend our brass life. So that's where we're at. I'm going to go through and get all 50 of these guys resized. And then we'll be ready to trim. All right, so resizing is done. And I just pulled out my uh, case trim and prep center. This is a Frankfurt Arsenal case trim and prep center. And I measured all of them and none of them need... Uh, need resized or I'm sorry none of them need trimmed and they're actually all a little bit short they're all a couple thousand short of trim length so somewhere in the past I made a dumb move and cut these guys a little bit short but that's not a huge deal it's just a couple thousands so we're not going to worry about it 
So now I just need to uh, deburr and chamfer the case mouths and we'll be ready for primers. One thing I did, see, it's been so long since I've made a video, I don't even remember how to make a video anymore. I forgot to talk about load data. And as I mentioned, we're going with uh, benchmark. Hodgson has got load data for the 123 grain Sierra Match King on their website. And let's see, they show a max of 27.5 grains. So we're going to go all the way up to 27.5 grains and we'll go, we'll step down in three tenths of a grain increments. So we're going to shoot 26.3 up to 27.5 with benchmark. Ramshot tack. Um, Ramshot or Western Powders has got data for the 123 grain Match King in their loading uh, manual and they go up to a maximum of 28.2 grains. So same deal, we're going to step down in three tenths of a grain increment, so we're going to shoot 27 up to 28.2 grains attack. That's kind of the plan. We're going to shoot 2.260 for an overall length for all of them. So should be pretty uh, pretty straightforward, hopefully. Hopefully we'll find some good shooters in here. All right, I need to uh, deburr and chamfer some case mounts, and we'll be ready to get on with some primers. All right, so I'm just finishing up priming and haven't had any issues at all. It's gone very well. We are using CCI BR4 primers because that's what we've been using in the 6.5 Grindel with success, so we'll just keep on using those. All right, here's the problem. I've got 50 cases ready for powder. But it's like 1 a.m., a little after 1, actually. So I don't want to make a mistake and blow my face off. So I'm going to leave these guys for in the morning. See you guys in the morning. Okay, good morning. Was I making any sense last night? It got a little bit late. I probably should have quit earlier than I did. But uh, we're going to start out with Benchmark. And need a scale. And a trickler. This is ladybug season. So if you see like ladybugs crawling everywhere during this video, that's what's going on. Maybe I should do a contest. The person who spots the most ladybugs wins something. I don't know. All right, before I get started, let's see. Our first charge is 26.3 grains, so let's let's throw 26 grains of check weights on here. Yep, 26.00. So we got good confidence in our scale this morning. So it's time to get started. Let's see, what I'll do is I'll grab a... A Lee scoop out of my scoop kit. Uh, what do you think? 1.6 cc's? Is that too big? That's that's too big. I'll try it out. Nope, that's 23 grains. That might be just about perfect. Yep, that's going to be perfect. So that's what I'll be doing, scooping it out of the can with the Lee scoop. And then trickling it up. Just got to do this 50 times and we'll be ready for the range. Here, after I get these first five measured out, we'll uh, go ahead and set up the bullet seating die. All right, let's get our bullet seating die set. 
what did I say? 2.260, right? Yep, that's what we're going to go with. I've got this guy backed out a lot, so hopefully this will not be too short. Nope, it's a mile and a half long. It's 2.485, so over 200 thousandths long. So let's go ahead and just move this guy 200 thousandths. Okay, that, sh that should be much closer. Two point two eight nine, two eight eight. So about twenty seven. I'll tell you what, let's go down twenty five. Two point two six three. Let's seat the next guy and see. That is one thing about Match Kings, you know. Sometimes they've got a little bit of a a hairy uh, me plat or tip tip of the bullet, so a little bit of overall length variation is to be expected. You know, if you pull out your bullet comparator and measure to the ogive, they're all perfect, but uh, overall length can kind of vary a little bit. Two point two seven one. 263 tell you what let's go down let's go down eight thousands the other problem with this brass is a lot of them not so much that one there's some of them i've really shot some hot loads and some of them have a little ejector mark or whatever so you know sometimes that can cause a minor irregularity there when you're trying to measure whatever i'm not uh I'm not freaking out about that too much. This guy should be short. 2.255, it is. 2.261. 2.259. Yep, looks like we're in the uh, we are in the good area. I think we're already compressed. Eh, I got a little bit of a little bit of shaking going on there, but with both powders, we're definitely going to be getting into compressed loads. So I'll need to keep an eye on that overall length and make sure it's not it's not growing on me. Two point two five eight. So good deal. That's the first five. Now I just need to plow through them and do the same thing over again. All right, guys, I'm just finishing up the last of the bullet seating here. And it will be time to immediately pack up the car and head to the range. Looking forward to shooting these guys. Getting back behind the 6.5 Grendel. So, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, guys, we are at the range. It is time to get this party started. I've actually been here for couple of hours shooting and got my practice target over here it's getting my scope dialed in and then these are some 10 shot groups I shot so the gun is doing pretty well today actually that guy is actually a 12 shot group I had 12 of those those were hand loads that's a good group for me and some factory ammo in here and I forget what that is but Basically, the gun sighted in, shooting good, warmed up, and ready to go. I've got my Caldwell Ballistic Precision Chronograph out there. I decided not to bring the mag Magneto Speed today. This is my gun. We are shooting with my Silencer Co. Omega Suppressor. It's been so long since I made a video. I guess I could give a quick rundown of the gun. It is a 24-inch Brownells barrel. 
which are supposedly made by Saturn. Got a Midwest Industries rail. This is a Gibbs side charging upper. Yep, got our little side charger there. Magpul PRS stock. And that's about it. This is a Vortex 6 to 24. First focal plane scope. And that's the basics of it. So, yeah, let's get started. So during my practice work here, I have had two failures to uh, feed. Everything's ejected fine. If you guys will recall, that's the problem I originally had with this gun was ejector problems. So that's all been fine. All the brass has been ejecting uh, very well, but there have been twice where it just didn't quite feed up. Uh, you know, the next round just didn't quite feed up off the magazine. This is a brand new uh, 10 round AR stoner magazine. And that's currently what I'm blaming it on. We'll see if I run into any more, but that is like, you know, it's 50 or 60 shots and I've had two of them that gave me that issue. All right, let's kick things off. Top left dot is 26.3 grains of benchmark. That was on me. Man, that went off faster than I expected. I wasn't quite settled. I get one mulligan, right? We'll just ignore that little guy. That one felt good and it's up there, huh? All right, so I only found four pieces of brass. These things are driving me crazy because shooting suppressed, there's so much gas and dirty crap going on in here that all the, uh, you know, the first first round that gets ejected is nice and shiny, but all of the others are just coated in black stuff. So they, they are very hard to find <laughs> on the ground. But the ones I did find looked great, of course. I mean, we were only at uh, 2,472 feet per second. So... Let's move on to 26.6 .6 grains and see what it does. All right, 26.9. I can't explain that first one. Felt felt like a good shot. All right, next up is 27.2 grains of benchmark. Man, that's a pretty wild point of impact shift if this continues. Looks like we got another failure to feed here. Yep. The case got ejected. It's just that next one didn't make it off the magazine. Interesting.
Man, that's a wild point of impact shift. Crazy. It's like getting dark fast. Clouds are rolling in. I still have an hour of daylight though, so. No rush. All right, the brass still looked good on 27.2 grains of benchmark, so this is 27.5. If that crazy point of impact shift keeps going, we might be off the paper. Yeah, that just, that got weird at the top end. Started that horizontal stringing there. Very weird. Yeah, the brass continued to look good on that highest charge of benchmark. Velocities weren't bad. We got up to 2570. The standard deviation numbers weren't particularly impressive, any of them. So let's move on to tack. And our first load is 27 grains. So I just realized my suppressor cover had slipped forward just a little bit and was hanging over the front just a touch. Suppressor's good and tight. I don't know if that would have made any difference or what, but... Yeah, all right, let's keep going. Yep, another failure to feed there. Yeah, we're going to call this a magazine problem until I prove otherwise. Not a bad little start for tack. Brass, of course, looks good. That was nice and slow, 2391. Pretty good standard deviation number, so let's move on to 27.3. Another failure to feed. Oh, and that guy didn't eject properly. I've had a couple dribble out on me here just recently. It might be the gun just getting filthy. This gun is absolutely seeping black gunk out of everywhere just about. Okay, 27.6. Yet another failure. Yeah, it looks like the chronograph only read two of those shots. It's probably because it's getting dark. Dang it. All right, so I just got out my light kit for the chronograph, so hopefully it'll continue to work. And then the clouds break up and it starts getting bright again. That's just how it goes. Man, they're like my hands are filthy. Like black garbage is getting sprayed all over my notebook. This gun is filthy. This gun is absolutely filthy. I'm probably getting it sprayed all over my face as well every time I shoot. 
I had the gun a bit over lubed, I guess, and it's just seeping gooey black junk everywhere. All right, 27.9 grains. It's another bizarre shift of impact where I'm wondering if it's me. And of course, we only got one velocity reading on that last one. God dang it. Man, the wheels are coming off here. We're having all sorts of problems. So to hell with the velocities. We'll get better readings next time. So let's just shoot these last five and see what happens. All right, so the sun went behind the clouds and we actually got five uh, velocity readings there. Only a little over 2,500 feet per second. And the brass looks really good. And I, I really like the way TAC is shooting here on the upper end. These shifts of point of impact are kind of freaking me out. And I don't know if it's me and just my, you know, crappy shooting. Might have to rerun this TAC work up you know maybe go a little bit hotter try and get up uh, closer to 2600 feet per second and see if we can recreate this uh this weird point of impact shift crap that's going on but all right time to get home back to the bench and good grief clean this poor gun this thing is a mess so i was pleasantly surprised when i got home and Put the calipers on these groups they were a lot better than i thought they were i don't know if it's i've been used to shooting uh my 16 power scopes with 300 blackout so much that switching to 24 like the groups just seemed bigger i don't know what it was it was it's kind of weird but uh with benchmark our best group was uh 0.58 inches and the biggest two of them were 1.37 inches this one where it got a little bit funky horizontal. Uh, and then this guy that had that weird flyer up here. So I think that was probably a, had a, a lot of weird point of impact shifts. It was like slowly going down. And then I think this was the first instance of this jump upward that we saw at uh, 27.2 grains. So kind of a weird... Uh, a weird point of impact shift there and then that dramatic shift to the right here kind of weird the uh the velocity i don't know what i was thinking i think i mentioned out at the range you know the, thinking that these velocities were low and they're not looking at my records from some of the other loads i've shot this is pretty smoking fast over 2500 feet per second with both powders and no serious pressure signs at all. Uh, yeah, no, no, no problems at all. So good to go on velocity. The standard deviation numbers, you know, none of them were single digits. Started off better here on the low end and then got a little bit higher up, up towards the top. But overall, benchmark wasn't bad, but TAC definitely outshot it. TAC, the worst group was the first one at 0 0.87 inches and the best was 0 0.61 inches so they were all very close three of the four or three of the five were in the uh you know six tenths of an inch and then uh yeah that guy was 
0.77 and that was 0.87. So very consistently good groups. Pretty darn good. And yeah, unfortunately, you know, the chronograph got screwed up here and I wasn't able to get enough, uh, enough shots registered to get a standard deviation that I could trust. But with the, with the exception of this guy, which was just funky, it, it was almost, uh, you know, standard deviation of 29.4. That one was all jacked up, but that one was 9.2. And then up at the top end, it was 10.7. So yeah, who knows what to think, but same sort of thing. And more weird, uh, point of impact shifts like this weird shift to the right here after, or actually I guess it would be this one kind of shifted to the left. Yeah, just kind of really weirdly all over the place. So I'll be interested to shoot more of this, you know, and as we fine tune it in. So it looks like, you know, as I continue work here with, with tack and this bullet, I'm gonna need to pick an area where that we're, we're not going in through any uh, weird point of impact shifts. So the best candidate at this point, this 27.3 to 27.6 range were, uh, you know, both very good groups and a reasonably consistent point of impact. But yeah, overall very happy though. These, these are, these are good groups. These are, these are as good as I shoot. So very happy with the bullet, happy with the accuracy potential it shows. Looking forward to trying more powders with this bullet, working some more with tack with this bullet. So all in all, it was good stuff. It was a good way to uh, kind of get, get back into 300 blackout here, kind of a kickoff video to get this party started again. I have picked up four boxes of these uh, Nosler AccuBond long range bullets. They are 129 grains, super sexy bullets. And I, I picked up a box just on a whim and then got to reading around and there are a lot of people having good luck with this bullet in 6.5 Grendel. But as I looked around to maybe buy some more, apparently it was a limited run. And I went ahead and picked up a couple boxes right now while I can. I'm sure it'll, you know, it'll come back around. They'll become available again, or they're probably still available in some places. But I just wanted to get a nice little stockpile so maybe we could go in, you know, test several powders and explore this bullet a little bit in the 6.5 Grendel. So... Happy with the Match Kings. This is the only box I've got. So I need to get some more Match Kings, some, some more 123 grain Match Kings. Definitely want to continue the work with this guy. But this will probably be the next bullet we, uh, we play around with for the Grendel. Maybe really sink our teeth into it and try to work up a, uh, work up a proper load with this guy. Is probably what's going to be coming next. And it's going to be coming really soon. Because like I said, we're, we're back on the horse here and we're not falling off again. We're going to continue work with the 6.5 Grendel and try to keep this thing rolling. So for now, that's it. Pretty happy with the first try on the Match Kings. So I'll see you guys next time.